Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create the ranunculus flower pyrography artwork I did. Hopefully I said the word right. There are terms that I will be using like uniform and pull away strokes. If you're unfamiliar with my terminology, I put a link below to a tutorial that explains them. Well, let's get to work. Use a writer pen tip to burn in the name. I went lightly the first time to get the letters started and to make sure they looked okay. Light burns are easier to fix, so if I didn't like the letters, I can easily sand them away and start over. Then turn up the heat on your burner and re-burn the letters so they are dark and deeply embedded in the wood. Use an X-Acto knife to scrape away some of the charring. It doesn't need to be perfect at this point. For each petal on the flower, we will burn in the shadows, then we will give the rest of the petal color, and lastly, we will add ruffles to the petals. Before burning any petal, look at the reference photo and analyze the shadows and the petal features so you can accurately replicate what you see. We will start with the lower left petal. First, burn in the cast shadow to a uniform dark tan color. Make sure to keep the shadow in the dark tan to very light brown hue range as the background will be very dark and you don't want viewers to mistake the shadow as being part of the background. I am using a combination of circular motion and uniform strokes to burn in the shadow. Just using uniform strokes is a great choice if you are newer to pyography. To color the rest of the petal, burn quick strokes of tan along it. Start each stroke on the upper edge or seam where the two petals touch. Don't worry if the strokes are not all uniform in color, as a little variety will add to the visual appeal. Now burn to the right of the slight ridge or large ruffle that is in the petal so that it is medium tan in color. Then add a few medium lines here and there that start on the edge of the flower and get pulled towards the center. This will suggest slight ruffling. With the lower right petal, we will burn in the cast shadow first. Be aware that you can work one petal at a time as I am doing, or you can burn in all of the cast shadows on the flower and then do the remaining steps that need to be done for each petal. If needed, re-burn the right corner of the first petal to ensure it contrasts with the adjacent petal. Now burn lines to give the petal color. With the lower petals, it is okay to burn past the lines because when we burn in the dark background, it will get covered up. Notice how the darker lines give the petal a ruffled look. Burn in the shadow on the next petal. Rotate the wood if needed to keep the pen tip in optimal position while burning along the lower edge of the shadow. Then burn darker lines at the curves to create the ruffles. Give the rest of the petal color by burning it to a tan hue. Also burn the cast shadow found on the upper petal and then finish coloring the petal. Lastly, if needed, re-burn over the ruffle lines just to make sure they stand out a little more. Periodically assess your art by comparing it with the reference photo. I wanted a little more contrast between the two petals, so I burned a dark line along the seam where the two petals touch. New petal, same beginning. Start by burning in the shadows. Then fill in the rest of the petal with tan-hued lines to give it color. Reburn along the outer edge to make the petal look like it's curving downward. This petal doesn't really have any ruffles on it, but if you want some, feel free to add a few. Burn in the shadows on the next petal. Then give the rest of the petal color 
Burn it till it is a tan hue. Lastly, burn the ruffles. Start each ruffle by placing the pin tip on the outer edge of the petal and pull it towards the center of the flower. Stop burning a short distance from the petal edge. This petal has a little depression in the center of the petal. So burn over that to darken it up and give the illusion of that depression. Burn along the inner edge of the far right petal. Then burn short strokes to give the petal color. Touch up any missing spots along the outer edge of the petal. Burn along the edges of the cast shadow on the next petal. Rotate the wood as needed to keep the pin tip in optimal position as you work on the shadow. Then fill in the cast shadow so that it is dark tan in color. Next, color the petal to a tan hue. Lastly, add the ruffles by burning lines along the outer edge of the petal that angle towards the center of the petal. The lines need to be several shades darker than the normal petal color. The contrast of light and dark lines will make the petal look ruffled. With this petal, burn in the cast shadow and color the rest of the petal to a tan color. Then burn along the seam line on the adjacent petal. Next, burn along the edges of the shadow and fill it until it is dark tan in color. Begin coloring the rest of the petal to a tan color. Look at the reference photo and notice the bend in the petal. The shadow falls to the right of the bend, so burn along the right side so it is several shades darker than the tan petal color. Then continue to color the petal and add the ruffles as you go. If you accidentally get the top of the bend too dark, then you can lighten it up using a spot sanding pen or even an ink pen eraser. If you don't have either one, you can also use a piece of 220 grit or higher sandpaper. Burn in the shadows on the adjacent petal. Looking at the reference photo reveals that this petal also has a bend in it. But if you pay attention, you'll see that the shadow or depression is to the left side of the bend. So when you burn along there, burn it several shades darker than the base or tan color that you're making most of the petal. After burning along the left side of the bend, color in the rest of the petal to a tan hue and add any ruffles. Burn in the shadows on the next petal. Then rotate the wood and burn pull-away strokes along the outer edge of the petal. Continue to rotate the wood as needed while you work so the pin tip stays in optimal position. Then rotate the wood back and finish coloring in the petal. This left petal is in the sun, so it doesn't have any cast shadows. Burn it to a tan color and add a few ruffles. Burn in the cast shadow to a dark tan color on this petal. Be careful around the little tiny petal fold that's adjacent to it. Then color the rest of the petal to a tan color and add any ruffles that are there and keep in mind, you can add more or fewer ruffles depending on how you want the flower to look. Burn short pull-away strokes along the edge of the petal. The edges are darker than the center of the petal because of the way that the sunlight is striking it. When you burn the pull-away strokes, start the stroke on the edge of the petal and pull it towards the center of the petal. Continue to build up the color along the edge of the petal. Then burn pull-away strokes along the edge of the right petal. Then burn in the cast shadow. With the center petal, burn along the upper edge of the petal so that it is dark tan in color. 
Then burn pull away strokes that start on the upper edge and pull them towards the base of the petal. Then burn over the base of the petal to give it color. Add some ruffles by burning darker lines that start on the top edge of the petal and are pulled down towards the petal center. Lightly burn over the curled petal edge. Burn along the right edge of the curled portion of the petal. Then rotate the wood and burn short pull away strokes along the outer edge of the curl. Next, burn along the bottom of the petal and extend the color towards the curl. If needed, darken up the outer edge of the curl. With this next petal, if you look at the reference photo, you'll notice it also has a curl. In fact, it has two, one on each end. Begin by burning along the top edge of the petal. Then burn short pull away strokes along the top and fill in the rest of the petal to a pale tan color. Avoid the curls at this point. And darkly burn along the outer edge of the curl and then color the rest of the curl to a dark tan color. Then darkly burn along the outer edge of the second curl. Burn a line along the inner edge of the curl. Then color in the lower edge or the far right edge of the petal that is in sunlight. Now burn pull away strokes along the outer edge of the curl. Start the stroke on the outer edge and pull it towards the inner edge. Lastly, burn pull away strokes along the inner edge. Start the stroke on the inner edge and pull them towards the outer edge. Burn the ruffles on the petal and then burn a dark line along the left edge. Lastly, color in the rest of the petal. Darkly burn along the upper edge of this petal, then color the rest of the petal to a tan hue and add some ruffles. Darkly burn in where the back petal can be seen between the two petals that are in the foreground. Then rotate the wood and burn pull away strokes along the lower edge of the back petal. Rotate the wood back and burn ruffles along the upper edge of the petal. Extend the color a little ways down the length of the petal. Darkly burn along the upper edge of this adjacent petal. Then burn in the cast shadows on the petal. Lastly, lightly burn over the rest of the petal. Burn along the left edge of the adjacent petal. Then start working on the shadows. Look at the reference photo so you have a better idea of their placement. Make sure to keep the base of the petal pale so that it will contrast with the center of the flower. With the next petal to the right, burn it to a tan hue. Keep the base of the petal pale. Burn the little curl to a medium tan color. And lastly, add a few ruffles here and there. Burn the cast shadow to a dark tan color. If needed, Darken any ruffles and then burn along the seam to provide contrast for the last petal we need to burn. The last petal has a depression on it and a few ruffles along the top. Now I want to point out I removed most of the times where I was pausing while burning. I left this one in to point out that I pause to examine the reference photo. I examine the reference photo a lot when I work, and I highly recommend that you do the same thing. Fill the upper half of the stamen with lines. Start the line in the middle and pull it towards the top. The lines tend to start thicker than the end, and we want the thin end to be up at the top to mimic the hairs that are around the stamen. I don't know if this is really called the stamen of the flower, but it is the only term that I know besides petal and stem, 
So that is what I'm going to be using. Switch to a writer pen tip and burn short, dark lines for the hairs along the lower portion of the stamen. Burn the right edge of the stem to a medium brown color. Don't burn it too dark as you want the stem to stand out from the background which will be a very dark brown color. Rotate the wood if needed to keep the pin tip in optimal position while burning along the left edge of the stem. Then fill in the stem so that it is a light to medium brown color. Now we will burn in the background. Start by burning very dark, thick lines or a thick band border around the flower, stem, and the leaves. The purpose is to create a buffer zone. Buffer zones allow you to work faster on the background because you don't have to slow down when you get near the flower. Buffer zones also help prevent accidentally burning over the flower when you're working on the background. Once the buffer zone is done, then fill the background with a dark mottled texture. The texture is created by burning small patches of circular motion. After burning one small patch, then start a new patch nearby. Keep each patch small and vary its size and shape. The whole background was created by just using circular motion. You want it to be a random, irregular looking dark texture. The bottom of the board below the leaves also gets filled with the mottled brown color. Make sure to use the flat of the shader when burning over the name. This will ensure that the pin tip glides over the grooves. If needed, re-scrape along the bottoms of the letters with the sharp point of an X-Acto knife so that they stand out better against the dark background. We are going to keep the leaves fairly simple as they are not the focal point of the artwork. First we will burn in the vein lines, then we will color the leaves. The leaves in the foreground will be the palest, the leaves immediately behind them will be a touch darker, and the ones in the back will be the darkest. Then we will add the shadows. Burn in the vein lines on the back leaf segment. Then darken the top of the back of the leaf. I use circular motion for this. Next, darken along the vein lines. Again, I use circular motion to do this. Then darken up the base of the leaf where all of the segments connect. And then just finish coloring in the leaf, making sure to burn along the vein lines and the base to a darker color and burn along the back edge of the next leaf. Then burn along the vein lines. And lastly, color the leaf to a tan hue by covering it or coating it with a layer of circular motion. Burn in the veins on the back segment and then fill in the segment with a tan color. Take your time as you work on the leaf to build up the color and the depth of it. Reburn over the veins to darken them up to a dark tan or light brown color. With the front leaf, burn the veins and then give the leaf a tan color. Make sure to avoid the tiny little segment that is sitting right to the left of it. Then use the razor edge of the shader to re-burn in the vein lines so that they are a dark tan or light brown color. 
You may find it helpful to rotate the wood while burning some of these lines as I have done. With the little segment in the front, burn in the veins and then give it some color. Add a touch more color to the front edge of the right segment so that it will look like it's slightly bent. Burn the stem to a tan color. Use the razor edge of the shader to burn in the vein lines on the next leaf. Then burn circular motion along the vein line and fill the leaf with color. As you work, re-burn along the vein lines to darken up around them. This will make them appear recessed or embedded down into the flesh of the leaf. With the tiny leaf in the back, burn it to a tan color and add a couple veins. With the far back right leaf, burn in the veins and then color it to a medium tan color. Make sure to color in the little sections peeking through behind the leaves in the front. If needed, reburn the tiny leaf to darken it up. Truth be told, I should have darkened mine up more. Use the razor edge of the shader to burn in the vein lines on the back right leaf and the far right leaf. Then give the far right leaf color using circular motion. Add extra color along the vein lines and along the front edge of the leaf to make it look like it is bending downward. Start adding the veins and give color to the adjacent leaf segment. At this point, it is just a matter of adding vein lines and color to the remaining leaves. Remember to keep the leaves in the front paler than those in the back to give a sense of depth. Again, my tiny little leaf on the back left side should have been darker than it is. My mistake there. And as you're working, burn in your vein lines and then burn over them so it widens the color a little bit and makes that vein look like it has been embedded down into the flesh of the leaf. Also, darken up the base of each leaf segment where they join together to make that look like it is down further than the tops of the leaves. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and found it easy to follow along with. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, there is a written version of the tutorial, the reference photo, and a free pattern for this artwork. I put a link to the tutorial in the description below. Well, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you next week.